Chapter 7 of The Boy at the Back of the Class Mr Irons knows When the bell rung for the first break the next morning, Mrs Khan kept her promise and let the new boy out into the playground for the very first time. Tom was put in charge of looking after him and we were all told that if he got scared or wanted to stop playing then we were to find a teacher immediately or go and see Miss Hemsey in the staff room. I didn't know why the new boy would be scared of being in the playground or why he wouldn't want to play with us but then I thought that maybe in his country the bullies had been mean to him at school too. I'd never really thought about it before but maybe there are bullies in everyone's playground. As Josie grabbed the football Tom tried to explain to the new boy how to play the game properly. You like this said Tom loudly pointing to the new boy and then his foot and then the ball. The new boy nodded. But not like this, continued Tom, shaking his head before pointing to the football and then his hand. This is stupid. He knows how to play football, said Michael. Maybe they play it differently in his country. Remember when I got here, I only knew American football, protested Tom, looking at me as if I should know the answer. I shrugged, I don't know. We should have asked Miss Hemsey. Oh, come on, cried Josie as we reached the playground. Just let him try. See if he knows it. By the time we'd reached our usual corner of the playground, Josie and Tom had decided that the new boy would be on Josie and Michael's team, since she was the best at football, so it wouldn't matter too much if the new boy couldn't play. And because it was just Tom and me on my team, we had the first kick. After less than a minute of the game starting, the new boy began to run and dribble and do lots of tricks with the football that none of us could do yet. And within the first five minutes, he had scored two goals. Whoa, said Tom. He's even better than Josie. Suddenly catching Josie's eye, he quickly added, or oh, nearly as good anyway. Woohoo, cried Michael as the new boy flashed past me and Tom and struck another goal. Woohoo! By now, a crowd was beginning to gather to watch the game and I could hear lots of upper years and lower years talking and saying things like, look, the dangerous kid's been allowed out. Does this mean he doesn't have a disease? And, but the kidnaps will, will be able to see him from here. I just heard Jenny tell everyone that she was sure she'd heard Mrs Sanders say that the new boy was a professional footballer. And when she suddenly cried out, ow! We knew what was happening. Brendan the bully and his mates, Liam and Chris, had pushed their way onto our pitch. Josie looked at me, I looked at Tom. Tom looked over at the new boy who was standing next to Michael looking confused. We want to play, said Brendan the bully, a nasty smile on his face. He walked over to the new boy who had the football and kicked the ball away so hard that it ended up on the other side of the playground. The new boy took a step back. Go away, Brendan, said Josie bravely. This is our game and that's my ball. Brendan the bully turned around to look at Josie and she swallowed nervously. But just then... His expression changed from mean to sad. I turned around too and saw that Mr Irons was walking towards us. What's going on here then? He asked, his moustache twitching. Mr Irons was one of the upper school teachers and is famous for being one of the strictest teachers in school and for never, ever smiling. He had a long face and a long nose, long lips and a large brown bristly moustache that he carries a tiny comb for in his front pocket jacket. Everyone knows about the comb because when he thinks no one is looking, he takes it out and combs his moustache with short straight lines. And when he gets very angry, you can hear his nose whistling. If that happens, then you know you're going to get it at least one detention or maybe a hundred lines to write. He is also the very worst teacher you can have on break duty because he hates noises. 
especially happy noises. Whenever he's in the playground, he walks around telling everyone off for laughing too loudly or for making fun sounds. Last year, he made a year one boy who was playing tag cry by telling them, only pigs squeal. And since the boy was squealing, he must have come from a large family of pigs and should spend the rest of the break inside. And another time, Mr Irons gave everyone cheering for handstand Hannah a hundred lines to write for being so loud, even though she was about to beat the world record for the longest handstand in history. Whenever anyone sees Mr Irons walking towards them, they always play more quietly or move away. But we'd been so happy that the new boy was playing with us that we'd forgotten we were in school where there are bully bullies and teacher bullies. Please, sir, wailed Brendan the bully. She won't let me play. I wanted to play and she said I couldn't. Mr Irons tutted at Josie. It's not a very nice thing to do to your friend, is it? He's not my friend, said Josie angrily, and he didn't ask. He came over and kicked our ball away. Please, sir, and that boy over there told me I couldn't play too, added Brendan the bully, pointing at the new boy and smirking. Mr Irons looked over at the new boy and then beckoned for him to come over. The new boy looked round and... Then realising what he was being asked to do, walked over to Mr Irons. Did you tell this boy he couldn't play with you? Asked Mr Irons, pointing to Brendan the bully. The new boy looked around again. Everyone else in the playground had stopped what they were doing and they were listening to what was being said. Please, sir, Brendan's lying, I cried out, running up behind the new boy. Yeah, I did, Michael. And he's new and he doesn't speak... When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. But until then, don't interrupt me again, shouted Mr Irons. I felt my whole face go red. And my tongue swell up in my mouth. I could see Brendan the bully smirking, but this time at me. Now, boy, Mr Irons turned to the new boy. I'll ask you again. Did you or did you not... Tell Brendan he couldn't play with you. The new boy stood rooted to the spot and looked over at us. But sir, you don't understand. He can't speak. Right, shouted Mr Irons, his nose whistling dangerously. That's detention for you, he cried out. And you, he added, pointing to the new boy. And you, he hissed at Michael. All three of you come to see me after school today until that... I am confiscating this ball. Josie watched angrily as Liam handed the ball to Mr Irons with a grin. As we watched Mr Irons walk off with the ball under his arm, the bell rang for the end of break. Brendan the bully smiled at us. See you at lunch then, he cried. But at lunchtime, the new boy was nowhere to be seen and at second break, Miss Hemsey came out with him so Brendan the bully stayed away from us. At home time, Tom had to run off to catch the bus because it was one of his brother's birthdays. The rest of us decided that instead of going to see Mr Irons, we would go and find Mrs Khan to see if she could help us. Even though Miss Hemsey had already spoken to her about what had happened, we also knew that if she didn't know the whole story, because Miss Hemsey hadn't been there, she wouldn't understand. So telling the new boy to follow us, we went and spoke to Mrs Khan. She listened to us in silence. And then when we were finished, she shook her head. Ridiculous, she muttered. And I think she was talking to herself. Some people can't see past the end of their own noses. She looked up, as, up at us and smiled. Not to worry, all of you come with me. As we walked to the other side of the school to reach Mr Irons' classroom, I thought about what Mrs Khan had said about their noses and ends. I touched my own nose and squashed it down because... I didn't ever want to have a nose so big that I couldn't see what was happening at the end of it. That was probably what Mr Irons made Mr Irons give detentions to people who didn't deserve it. Michael saw me and asked what I was doing, so I told him. But he said my nose was too small and flat to ever get in the way of my eyes, so I didn't have anything to worry about. 
When we got to Mr Iron's office, Mrs Khan told us to wait outside. We couldn't hear anything except a loud buzzing as if there were two giant bumblebees on the other side of the door. But after a minute, Mr Irons came out and stared down at Michael, the new boy, and me with his nose thrust in the air. Maybe he was trying to see if he could see past it better that way. He gave Josie her football back and didn't say anything else to us. But from that day on, whenever he saw any of us, his eyes would narrow and his nose would whistle ever so quietly. You don't really need to speak someone else's language to know when they don't like you very much. So even though the new boy couldn't speak many English words then, he knew we had to keep ourselves to ourselves. And Josie's football out of the way of Mr Irons and his horrible whistling nose.